You might think that making a good movie that people will actually like will require all kind of fancy stuff and expensive cameras, but in fact, you can make a decent film with just the modest resources that you already have, as long as you come up with a brilliant idea and you deliver it in the best way possible. There are a lot of movies out there that are not really a huge budget and they were a huge success, like the movie called The Exam, for example. It was filmed entirely in one room, almost. Uh, the cast is only 8 or 10 actors. That's it. And it was a great movie, very entertaining. And there are many other examples if you look around. So the first thing to consider is the idea. It could be anything, really. The first short movie that I have made a few years back, well, if you can actually call it a short movie, was about me talking to my conscience in the mirror. So the main idea was me talking to myself in the mirror. And from that idea, I came up with the story and the dialogue, starting, ending, and everything. I'm gonna put the link below if you wanna watch it. You can get inspired by watching other movies or reading books or just observing other people's lives or just by discussions with friends and filmmakers and like-minded people. But don't go crazy with your ideas either. Remember, little budget, don't go crazy thinking about some kind of Jurassic Park kind of movie or, I don't know, sci-fi, lasers and alien stuff that you can't afford. To keep it doable, you should work it backwards. Meaning, start with what you have, then come up with the idea, not the other way around. Here are a few things that you should consider before coming up with the idea. The first thing is actors. How many people do you have and that you can really count on? And I'm talking about really count on because people get all excited when you tell them oh yes you're gonna make a movie and everything they're all excited but then when time comes up for the shooting nobody shows up and you're left alone like an idiot <laughs> i mean some people who will stick with you till the end like i don't know close friends family members if you even can afford to pay professional artists then you can do it second thing you should think of is locations what are the places that you can actually use? Your house, friend's house, the garage, beach, forest, whatever. But when you're filming outside, there could be some problems because in public places you have to ask for a permit to film in some places. You are also not allowed to film people without their consent. But we're gonna talk about this in another episode. Third thing is the other tools. The cameras that you have, microphones, clothes, makeup. Masks, weapons, if you're gonna use any. Fake weapons, of course. Uh -huh. Okay, so now that you know what you have, come up with the idea. Try to find something. Write a list of everything. I have this, I have that, I can afford this, I can afford that, I can film here. I can... Then come up with an idea that would be doable for you. There's also something very important that you should consider is a message, a positive message to the viewer. Your film has to convey some kind of good thing, add some value. Because this will make up for all the little mistakes that you're gonna be making in the process of filming. You know, especially if you're gonna send it to some kind of competitions like movie festivals or whatever, or you are going to screen it in your school or something or in front of any kind of jury. Okay, so now you know what you have, you came up with the idea and the theme of your movie it's time to put it to work. Now start writing a script. Okay, today we are going to talk about how to write your movie script, so stay tuned. In the first part I will just talk about the key elements that your script must have and in the second part I'm gonna talk about the proper way to write a professional script in case you're planning to become a professional script writer. But before any of that there's something very important that I have to tell you. Remember when we talked about working backwards, meaning knowing what you have before coming up with an idea? Now before the story and the script, you must know who are the people that are going to be the actors in your movie. Now once you know who are the people that are going to be your actors, you should write their characters as close as possible to their personalities. Remember, they are not professional actors, so don't give them overly charged emotional situations to play, because they will probably not give you a great performance. Instead, focus and work on what they already have. For example, if you have a cousin who is funny, you can give the character that they are going to play a funny side. 
Maybe write few jokes or a couple sarcastic lines. Or if your friend looks charismatic and good in suits, give them a serious role and focus on their appearance and charisma and so on. So focus on what your people have before writing the story and the script. The story. The story is simply what happens to who. Generally, your story will have three basic stages. The beginning, that's when you introduce the characters and give us general information about the places. For example, Tony is a nice guy, he lives a peaceful life, he has a cat, he likes sports, he goes to work every day, blah blah blah. Then in the middle, you introduce the problem, you tell us what the problem is. For example, on his way to work, Tony got stuck in the middle of a bank robbery and because of that he had to make a choice, either to fight or to surrender. He chooses to fight the bad guys, blah blah blah. You continue revealing how the problem gets more complicated and what the character or the characters are doing about it. What are they doing to solve it? And of course at the end you tell us what the characters did to solve the problem and how everything ends. This is just a general structure of the story. It doesn't have to go in that exact order or in a linear timeline. You can start from the middle or from the end and then go backwards or you can go in two or three different timelines. It doesn't also mean that the ending will be a happy ending. It's all up to you, but generally there are always these three stages. One important thing to keep in mind is that your character must go through a major change during the story. The events that happened to them changed something about them at the end or helped them grow. The script. Now that your story is ready, you should break it down into scenes. Take all your time, use drafts. It might be frustrating sometimes to get your thoughts into words on papers. Here's the script that I wrote. It's very unprofessional, but it doesn't matter since it was just for me and a friend. We could just sit and talk about how things will go and we did a lot of improvising too. And you can do the same. You can write your script in an understandable way to your small crew. There's nothing wrong with that as long as your script has some basic elements like the location, for example. Where is this scene happening? Living room, kitchen, garage, whatever. When is it happening? Is it day or night? Characters names, the dialogue, which means everyone's line. I think I'm gonna make a separate video about how to write a good dialogue because it needs a lot of attention. Now let's talk about how to format a script properly in a professional way. This is a professional Hollywood script. Every properly formatted script must have five key elements. The first one is the slug line. It's kind of an introduction to the scene. It always starts by where is it happening? Is it outside or inside? It's always INT, interior, or EXT, exterior, inside or outside. Then followed by the name of the place. In this case, it was the interrogation room, police headquarters. And finally, when is it happening? Mostly it's either day or night. You don't have to be specific, unless in very few cases. And it is always written in capital letters. Second thing is the action or description. It is usually a brief description of the scene and also introduction of characters. It's always brief, you don't have to go into details. Be as brief as possible. You are just given a general vibe of the scene. You don't have to go uh, and talk about every small detail. And it is always in the present tense. Do not write it in the future like saying this character will do that. No, you say the character does this. And if you are introducing a new character, a new person who has not been in the previous scene, you always write their names in caps, in capital letters. That way, the person who is reading your scripts will know that this person just arrived, just came, he's a new character. Same for the things that you want to bring attention to or special sounds or sound effects like explosions. Third thing is the character name. It's always centered and in capital letters. You can add OS, which stands for off screen, in case the character is off the screen, but he's still present in the scene. He's just not in the frame. And you can add VO, which stands for voiceover, in case the character is not in the scene and doing a voiceover. Number four is the dialogue, which is simply the line that each character will say. It's usually centered. And if the character is doing something while speaking, like for example scratching his head or cleaning a glass or anything, you could write it in parentheticals before his line. 
that's it. Those were the basic elements that your script must have. Uh, you don't have to worry about the margins too much because there are free softwares that can help you do that. Uh, the famous one that most beginners use is called Celtex. I'm gonna put the link to it below. It's free. There are others too. There are sites that uh, have a lot of movies, your favorite movie script that you can go to and read the scripts. The more scripts you read, the more you get used to how to write your own. I'm gonna put the link below if you want to read the scripts. And by the way, your script must be written in 12 point courier font. That's the standard way to write it. That was it for today. Thank you for listening. Hello there and welcome. In the last episode we talked about the script, today we are going to talk about the dialogue. But before talking about the dialogue, which means the lines that the characters would actually say, let's talk about when to use them. Filmmaking is also called visual storytelling and it's called visual for a reason. So that's what you should be focusing on. Telling the story visually. In other words, if you can tell an information visually without dialogue, then do it. Some people make the mistake of revealing too many informations through the dialogue. Maybe because they are afraid that people will not understand what's going on. Well, that kind of ruins the concept of uh, visual storytelling. People will understand, they are smart enough. Use context and subtext. There's no need to go in depth in the meanings of these two words. I'm just gonna give you an example so that you understand what I'm talking about. Imagine a scene at the airport. You show the footage of a plane that is landing and then one character tells the other, oh, the plane just landed. This line is useless because we already saw that the plane landed. Unless seeing that line serves a purpose or the way it has been said maybe means something. For example, one of them tells the other, hey, the plane just landed. Which means something like, hurry up, let's go. What's next? What are we gonna do next? So. This is why the line was actually said, not to tell us that the plane has landed. Another example could be of a kid coming back home from school and you already showed the footage of the kid coming back home from school. And the first thing he tells his mom is, hey mom, I just came home from school. Totally useless, we already saw that. I hope you get the point now. Next thing is how much of a dialogue do you need? There's a rule in filmmaking that says, Start the scene as late as possible and end it as soon as possible. Which means there's no need for the small talk every time you start a scene. Like, hi, how are you? How are you doing? How have you been doing? What's up? What's new? And then bye. Thank you so much. You're welcome. There's no need for that in every scene. Unless, of course, saying it serves a certain purpose. Now take a look at this horrible scene. Hi. Can I help you? Yeah, can I have a dozen red roses, please? Oh, hi, Johnny. I didn't know it was you. How much is it? It'll be $18. Here you go. Keep the change. Hi, doggy. You're my favorite customer. Thanks a lot. Bye. Forget about the terrible acting for now. The purpose of this scene is probably telling us that the man bought flowers. That's what I think. Can't actually see any other purpose. Anyway, but why did he have to say all the hi, how are you, thank you, all these small talk that's nonsense? They could have shown us just the person holding the flowers and giving money, we would understand that he just bought flowers. So the scene could be actually reduced to this. Can I have a dozen red roses, please? I'll keep the change. Because why do I need to know the price of the roses that he just bought? Is the movie about the price of roses and its rise in the market or something? No. And why did she tell him that he's her favorite customer? Why do we need to know this information? Even if it serves something, they could have done it in a better way. Now back to the rules of writing a great dialogue. And by the end of this video, I'm going to tell you when to follow these rules and how. So watch till the end, it's very important. Rule number one, the golden rule that kinda affects all the other rules is don't be boring. We live in a time when the viewers have a lot of options and choices. So if you want them to keep watching your movie, the last thing you want to do to them is bore them with useless scenes and informations. So think about that as you are writing your dialogue. Second rule, your dialogue must be logical, human, but actually not real. How is that? In real life, we say a lot of nonsense. We talk in all directions. We tend to avoid the point. And you don't want that in your movie because it's boring. What you need is a dialogue that is short and straight to the point. 
and that what sells it as real dialogue. Number three, do not drop facts in the first lines of dialogue. Instead, spread them all over your movie timeline. Save some until people uh, are curious and wondering. Number four, we kinda said it before, keep your sentences as short as possible. Like we said before, in real conversations we say a lot of nonsense and when conversations end, sometimes we think about a great line, a great punchline that we could have said and it could have changed the whole conversation. So when you are writing a dialogue, you have all the time in the world to come up with a great line to say. So the best dialogue is the one that has short punchlines. Number five, avoid repetition. For example, back to the kid who came home from school and he told his mom, mom, I was expelled today. And then the mom later on meets the dad and told him, your son was expelled today. This is repetition. We already know that he was expelled. And to fix that, you can do a cut to the reaction of the father by, for example, the father saying, what? Why? What did he do? If we saw that, we will understand that the mom just told him the information that we already know. But if you say it again, it's gonna be repetition and it's boring. Number six, conclusion. Everything you write in the dialogue should be either pushing the story forward, revealing character, or at least entertaining. If it's neither of that, then make it as short as possible. Because of course your dialogue is not gonna be all perfect. Those rules should be enough, but we could even go deeper in how to make your dialogue even greater. Using some key points like the intention. The dialogue has to match the intention of the character in the scene, not just transform information from the writer to the audience. Each character has their own personality, backstory, motives. They are not robots, so they are expressing their own desire as independent characters. So the dialogues should not be separated from the character as a whole, which will lead us to the next point, uniqueness. Unique characters. Every character has a different way of talking, different vocabulary that also depends on their education, background, social status, and so on. For example, a doctor will speak in a different way than a criminal. The choice of word is important. Do not write the dialogue as if it was you talking. Use different words for each character. The expression what, for example, some people say it what, some people say what's that, some people say excuse me, some people say pardon. Everyone in this situation asks using a different word. Same for the word no. Some say no, some say no, some say nope. Everyone say it in a different way. So when you are writing a line for a character, think about the expression that they would say all the time and stick to it. For example, if John says no as no, then every time you write a line for John and he has to say no, write it as no. Also, some people in real life say one expression a lot, like, uh, you know, some people, you know, say, you know, uh, a lot of time, you know or uh, something like, uh, like, I was like uh, going there and then I said like, and then I was like, and he was like, then we were both like, some people use like a lot, all the time, every sentence, or I don't, or whatever. So you can use that too, and make one character stick to one expression, the whole thing, the whole movie. It helps in building an independent character that is believable and that is not you. Or you can rehearse your dialogue with your actual characters. It will help you in writing their lines uh, according to their own personality. We talked about that in the last episode. Next point, contrast and conflict. It's better when the two people or more that are in the dialogue have different motives and different intention. It gives contrast to the scene. If the two people are the same, the scene will be boring. This is not a hard rule because it's impossible to do it in every line of dialogue but if there is room for it do it it's way better it makes the scene more intense and more interesting now we are done with the rules let's talk about how to apply them following the rules may actually kill your inspiration and flow of writing it can limit your creativity so what you should do is that you should forget about them at first and just write the whole thing. Once you're done writing the whole thing, now it's time to apply the rules and correct all the mistakes. Go through your dialogue over and over and each time focus on one aspect, one thing at a time. 
For example, the first time you go through your dialogue, focus on shortening the sentences and get rid of any useless words. Next time, focus on customizing the vocabulary of every character and uh, give them expressions that they will be saying all the time. Next time, try creating contrast between characters and so on. The last thing we could say is that uh, good dialogue writers are also good listeners. So if you want to become better in writing dialogues, listen more. Listen to conversations whenever people are talking around you. Pay attention to what they say and how they talk. Also, when you are watching movies, focus on the dialogues and how characters talk and all we talked about like conflict and uh, contrast and everything. That's it for today. Thank you for watching and see you in the next episode. Everything you need to know about location and location scouting. Stay tuned. In this video, how to decide what location you need, where to find good locations, location scouting, maximizing your location. How to decide what location you need. This depends mainly on the genre of your movie. And since we're talking about low budget filmmaking, you will just have to do with what you have, which means that we're going back to the golden rule I always talk about that says, think of what you have before even writing the movie. Or you can be creative and squeeze your location and get the most of it. We're gonna see how at the end of this video. To get inspired about the kind of locations that you need for your movie, watch movies of the same genre and pay attention to the locations. And it's better if you find the behind the scene footage, because that's where you could see the locations as they are, before the color correction and color grading and everything. Also the filming angles and lightings change how everything looks on screen. Like this scene for example. It looks creepy. But it doesn't when you see it from behind the scenes. Where to find good locations? Since we're talking about low budget, you possibly will not look in anything that costs money. Which means that your choices are limited. You start by filming in your own home or your friend's home. That's what everybody else does. If you can't find what you're looking for, try to look around you if there are any film schools or anything. Or just regular schools or universities. They might have a film club or something similar. Don't be ashamed to ask. You never know, if they like the idea of your movie, they might grant you access to their facility. Some local associations or even small businesses wouldn't mind helping you either. Just tell them that you're gonna mention them in the credits and everything. Uh, you have something to offer, don't come up as someone who is desperate for help. Or you're going to promote their business or their brand somehow. Navigate through Google Maps, you never know what you could find. Sometimes you can find some really good location just around you, like uh, abandoned houses or abandoned even big factories. You might be surprised about what you could find. Or if you have some money to spend, think about renting a place. In this case, you have to be professional and have the owner sign a location agreement before doing anything, so that each one of you knows their right clearly. I'm gonna leave you a link to an example of a location agreement in the description below. Location scouting it simply means going to the location and checking it out before the filming. Why? To make sure that everything is alright and you will not have any troubles during the filming. Things to check during the scouting but not limited to. The power source to plug your equipment, charge your phone and camera. You will have people with you during the filming so they will probably need to use the bathroom in case you're taking too long. Or at least a room to change their clothes. Check if that is available in your location too. But most importantly, the lighting and sound. Do the scouting at the same time you are planning to film one day beforehand. If you are planning to do the filming early in the morning, then do the scouting early in the morning. If you are planning to film at night, then do the scouting at night and so on. So that you will know exactly where the sun will be at the time of the filming. And if there's enough light coming through the windows. And how is it? And what can you do to improve the quality of lighting in general? Unless you are planning to rely entirely on your own lighting system, which I doubt. And doing it one day beforehand means that you will probably have the same conditions of weather and sun and everything. Unless you live in a place where the weather changes every day. In this case, you're screwed. Anyway, you will also check if there are any noises at the time of filming. Uh, you never know, your location might be near an airport or a train station or any busy place. So you need to figure out when is it as quiet as possible. Trust me, lighting and sounds are very, 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 very important. I had to learn it the hard way. 
maximizing your location. Get the most of your location by filming in every corner you have, along with changing the decoration and colors and everything, to sell the illusion that you filmed in different places. Be creative. If you need an office scene, for example, you don't have to film it in a real office. Get a desk, a chair, few office items, and you're good to go. For example, I needed a scene in a bar, but I couldn't film in a real one, so I took a corner in the kitchen, I brought some glasses, I put up a picture of New York City, I got a friend sitting next to me and drinking, he was the only one available at the time, and at the end I added some bar sound. And here we go. It almost seems like a real bar. You can do the same with whatever scene you need. That's it for today, thank you so much for watching and see you in the next video. What you wear says a lot about you. In this video you will learn how to pick the outfit of your character in 5 steps for a better visual effect of your movie. Stay tuned. Costume design is a game changer. It's a powerful psychological tool that helps filmmakers tell their story. Fashion is not the primary thing, the primary effort in motion pictures is to tell the story. It has a magical effect on a subconscious level that makes us like or dislike a movie without us even knowing. But it's underrated and custom designers don't get the credit that they deserve. Most of the time the expression custom designing is associated with Halloween or disguised parties, which generally means wearing an outfit to look like someone else. But in filmmaking it's the opposite. Costumes is what helps the viewer know who the characters really are. I'm an elf. They kind of give us insight into the characters. Here are a few examples of the power that custom design have, depending on the purpose of the scene, of course. It can make a character stand out from the crowd. It can make a character blend in with the movie color palette. It can create contrast between two characters in a scene, etc. Now back to the concept of low-budget filmmaking. Low-budget filmmakers don't usually hire custom designers for the obvious reason that we all know. And since this step could make a huge difference for your movie, here are the 5 steps to follow to get the best out of it in case you can't hire a professional custom designer. Step number 1. Define the factors that will influence the outfit of your characters by asking yourself questions like How old is my character? What's their background? Education? Current financial status? What could be their fashion taste? What are their religious or spiritual beliefs, etc. Add as many factors as you can. Step number two. Take into consideration the genre and the mood of your movie along with the time and location where the events of the story are happening. Step number three. Get inspired by watching movies of the same genre that have characters similar to yours. For example, if your character is a geek that lives in their mom's basement, with all due respect, I actually googled the word geek and I found out that it's not offensive, so I allowed myself to say it. Anyway, watch movies that have similar characters and pay attention to what that character is wearing all along the movie and notice any changes during the character development arc or the major shift in. We talked about how important is character development in the episode of how to write his script. Anyway, you don't have to copy exactly from one movie. Matter of fact, you should watch several movies to get a general idea. Step number four. Now that you know how your character will be dressed, see if the person slash actor who is going to play the role can actually help. Maybe they have similar style of clothing or maybe they can find it somehow. The steps could end right here, but in case your actor can't help then move on to the step number five, which is simply find another way. Genius, aren't I? Anyway, I can't tell you where you can rent or buy or even design clothes and accessories for a cheap price because it depends where you live. But no matter where you are, there are always places that could be of help. You just have to find them. And here are tips to help you. Tip number one, contact local filmmakers and ask them where they do the shopping for their costumes. Tip number two, post in social media filmmaking groups about what you're looking for. Tip number three, or you can check out online shopping websites. If none of these tips helped you, then you're screwed. You just have to do with what you have and miss a good opportunity to make your movie look better. That's all I have to say about custom design and let me know if I missed something or if you have additional tips for all of us to know. I would like to know more about your own custom designing experience. Do you actually invest in it? And if so, how do you proceed? And of course, if you like this video, smash the like button. If you want to see more similar content, then please consider subscribing. Thank you for watching and see you in the next episode.